Most of the fuzzy dots in this photo from the Hubble Space Telescope are globular clusters orbiting M87. The giant galaxy has 15,000 of them. But M87 represents the upper end of the clustering phenomenon. It sits at the core of a cluster, not of stars, but of galaxies, where our starship now travels to witness the violence of giant star systems colliding at speeds of a million miles an hour. All it takes is a few quick looks at star clusters to see how obvious gravity's effect is in holding stars together. Gravity is like the sculpture of the universe. It influences large regions around it. So it can cause galaxies to cluster together just like stars cluster together, but on a much, much bigger scale, on scales of millions of light years. That's fantastic. It's a process that begins right in our own astronomical backyard, where our spaceship prepares to fly outside the galaxy. The Milky Way is a largish but relatively typical spiral galaxy, and we're located in a small galaxy group, which is a very typical kind of environment for material to be located in in the universe. Only about 5% of galaxies are located in rich clusters, but more than half of them are located in small groups of galaxies. Our galaxy's home cluster is called the local group. A trip across three million light years takes us past its two big members, the Milky Way and M31, the Andromeda Galaxy. The Triangulum Galaxy is the next largest, and a few dozen dwarf galaxies circulate among them. The galaxies within an individual cluster tend to gradually merge with time. So in the next four, five, six billion years, our Milky Way galaxy is going to merge with the Andromeda galaxy. Right now, if we view the whole universe from Earth orbit, our view screen looks like this. Our own galaxy's plane dominates, stretching across the center. But when we merge with Andromeda, the sky will look vastly changed. And a very spectacular event, it's likely to result in an elliptical galaxy, which looks very, very different than either of the two component spirals. Andromeda will fly by several times, as it and the Milky Way do a gravitational dance. The merger will destroy their elegant disk shapes. In the end, they'll settle into a giant rounded blob the typical form of elliptical galaxies across the universe. The local group is tiny compared to the big galaxy clusters across the universe. The nearest big cluster is the next stop on our voyage. Our local group is about 60 million light years away from a much bigger cluster, the Virgo cluster of galaxies consisting of thousands of galaxies, not just a few dozen. And our local group in the Virgo cluster and a bunch of other clusters are part of an even bigger structure called the local supercluster. Such clusters are violent places with galaxies moving at incredible speed. We're talking about speeds of hundreds of kilometers per second, or another way of saying that would be something in the vicinity of a million miles an hour we take our trip into the high-velocity realm of these giant clusters to solve a mystery about galaxies. Why some have stars forming in clusters and others don't. The answer is found in galactic gas. Galaxies are sometimes gas-rich and sometimes gas-poor. Gas-rich galaxies tend to be forming stars fairly actively and the gas-poor ones don't. It turns out that the action in galaxy clusters is something like a war zone, where the million mile an hour speeds put any gas-rich galaxy in danger of being strangled. Galaxy strangulation occurs when a galaxy that's not part of a cluster comes close to a cluster, and the gravitational pull, the tidal pull of that cluster, can remove or suck gas out of that incoming galaxy. That leaves the galaxy deficient in gas, and so it's unable to form many new stars. 
it gets strangled. And once a galaxy travels deep inside the cluster, it faces trouble from what's called ram pressure stripping as it speeds through the thin gas floating in the cluster's base. When zooming through that gas, the pressure of the gas can actually strip gas away from the galaxy itself, leaving it relatively gas-free and unable to form many new star clusters. If we flew through the cluster looking for the intergalactic gas, we wouldn't see it. It is so very thin that on Earth, we'd consider it a perfect vacuum. But if we turn on our spaceship's X-ray detectors, it would show up as a massive, eerie glow. The galaxies that we see in visible light, if we look with an ordinary telescope, aren't the only component of galaxy clusters. Indeed, they're not even really the dominant component. The dominant component is a hot, thin gas. And the gas was heated by shocks during the formation process of the clusters and is now so hot that it glows in X-rays. And this is completely invisible to normal light. The hot gas exerts more gravitational influence on the cluster than the visible galaxies themselves. Its overwhelming gravity helps draw cluster galaxies to a common center and when we look at galaxy clusters, we see a preview of our own future. In the cluster center is often a giant elliptical galaxy, the result of countless gravity-driven mergers, like the one that will join the Milky Way with Andromeda. That's a common trend for clusters of galaxies. The galaxies within them are merging together, forming a few and finally one super galaxy. Is the universe destined to be filled with isolated supergalaxies? Will gravity continue its unending pull? To find the answers, we enlist supercomputers as time machines, taking us into the future. The scenario they predict may be far more grim than anyone ever suspected. The world's greatest telescopes and satellite observatories routinely serve up awesome pictures of cosmic clusters. But essentially, these are only snapshots in time. To truly watch the universe as it evolves, we need a time machine. Human lives are short compared with cosmic time scales. But we can watch effectively how galaxies and galaxy clusters evolve by simulating them on powerful computers. The supercomputer turns our starship into a time machine for the next leg of our mission to find out how the universe evolved and where it's going to end up. This simulation shows how a galaxy cluster may form. 12.3 billion years of stellar evolution is condensed into less than a minute. 